they're in. Insurance companies, like the same deal. Hospitals. I thought. I thought that they were happy that they, they signed, bought in because they signed off. Hey, you're bringing us all these new patients, yes. and you're not controlling what we charge. Yes. Well, actually, on the back end, they are right. Eighty percent for uh, small businesses, and eighty-five percent for no, eighty-five percent for small businesses, eighty percent, or is it, it's, uh, it's eight, seventy-five and eighty percent. Of the what's collected as premiums has to go back into health care. So it, there's kind of sort of a, a limit on what they can put in their pockets. Not on what they charge, but on what they put in their pockets. Prime your river. Oh, right. Prime your river. Right. My question is who's the constituency for the Tea Party that is pushing them to kill Obamacare? Everybody with a dog in the fight bought in and nothing has changed. Why are the Republicans, I mean, other than um, what Bill Maher and John Stewart keep pointing out, that Obama is black? I've other than that. because Obama is black. I've heard that. Why are the Republicans opposing this? Dude, what's we, their constituency? We got, we got hoodwinked. Basically, the Republicans got what they wanted at the table, representing their corporate friends, and then they walked away from the table, turned around to the base, and said, Look at how the government is trying to screw you. Look, they've got death panels. Death panels. Can you believe this? Well, no, my question is, what's the constituency? Who is the constituency? What is the constituency? You're missing the point. The point here is they're scaring the shit out of people. That's the business that the Republican Party is in. They're in the scaring the shit out of people business. And so when they can wave the socialism flag, when they can wave the too much government flag, when they can wave the death panel flag, the base gets scared. And a scared base is a motivated base. These guys know it. George Bush taught a master's class in scaring the crap out of people. And, and, and that's what we're talking about here. So you know, why, why are they doing something that's not in the American interest? Because it's in their interest. Well, but it's not in the interest of their money sources. No, it's in their corporates. They're, they're we'll talk later. We'll talk later. Hi. Microphone. Really? Really. Uh, I have a 60-second anecdote. Um, doctors have an expression, uh, an acronym of VOMIT. It stands for Victim of Modern Imaging Technology. Basically, when they use it, they refer to somebody who, say, comes into the emergency room, they're injured, they do a CT scan to see what injuries the person might have, and they discover something else. They go in, they do surgery, there was nothing there. You know, the scan just showed something strange. But I would suggest to you that you also were a victim of modern imaging technology with your cat bite. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. I was certainly a victim of something that day, I'll tell you. Hi again. David, me again. Um, my question is from a public uh, policy standpoint. The idea of personal responsibility came from Heritage Foundation. Romney, yes. Romney ran with that. Do you think, looking back, and I know it's kind of a spilled milk and water under the bridge, but do you think the Obama administration could have done a better job maybe explaining it to people? Republicans' idea, we picked it up. I don't understand why the Democrats are so bad at explaining things to the American people. And it's not just health care, it's everything. And especially for a man as well-spoken as Barack Obama, the fact that he can't go into FDR mode and do a fireside chat kind of thing where he has the American people cozy up to him and he explains things in plain English. I mean, this is the time that you need a Ross Perot who's got his little whiteboard or whatever, and explains things. Now, Ross Perot was a nutcase, but he was good at that. And, and, and we need someone to do that. When it comes to health care, the dog and pony show that I presented to you tonight, I mean, I'm just kind of speaking extemporaneously and yet making very basic points in simple language. Why can't the Democrats do that? I have no idea. Why do they let the Republicans get away with out and out lies? And really, the Republican propaganda machine is built solely on falsehoods. They got nothing to sell. They don't even have an alternative plan on the table. They got nothing. <laughs>
all they can do is offer lies. And how, how is it that the Democrats aren't able to call them on it and say bullshit and hold them to account because the facts are on our side? So I, I think, you know, woe to the Democrats that they allow the game to be dominated by a lesser player. Or let me, let me walk that back, not a lesser player. These guys are playing circles around us. So they're gaming the system and we're not able to keep up. In any case, it's rigged and we're not playing effectively. The Democrats have a lot to answer for when it comes to explaining good common sense policy to the American people. And are we getting near the, okay, last three. Uh, very few, if any, people know who sets the prices for Medicare. I'm going to guess that you don't know, nor does the gastroenterologist who spoke. There is a board of experts, doctors and whatnot, who set prices for Medicare. I'm looking forward to you writing articles about it. I have an article from the Washington Monthly. There are 31 doctors and there are a committee of the American Medical Association. It's called Specialty Society Relative Value Scale Update Committee. You know they meet a lot of chicks with a name like that, right? They are anonymous. They operate secretly. They meet three times a year. They set prices and they destroy their records so nobody has a record of what they talked about. It's not a good system. I've They're anonymous. Believed, I've long believed that what we need is basically a Federal Reserve of Healthcare, where the same basic system, where you need a Greenspan or a Bernanke-like figure who will be papal in his authority, with oversight, with oversight who is able to, without being beholden to all those special interests, make those hard decisions about very difficult things. and and. It, we don't need to emulate any other nation. We can learn from their experiences. We can fix their mistakes. We can take from their successes. What we need is a body, like say the Federal Reserve, that is capable and empowered to create a healthcare system that is distinctly American. I'm there, guessing you're gonna start laying something there else There was on now. something set up like that, which would be a government appointed committee, and naturally it's controversial and not well known. Anyway, I'm going to give you the articles so you can research this. Fair enough. I'd be happy to see uh, Thank And you. by the way, 90% of the recommendations of this committee are accepted by Medicare. 90%. So that's who writes our laws, like the Affordable Health Care law, law was written by the former executive director of the American Hospital Association. And it was written of, by a lot of people. Because, because of reading your columns, I know a lot about this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome away with the mic. We won't, let, we won't let you get away with that. Thank you. Hi. I just want to make two comments or whatever. Last Friday, my employer put together uh, a webinar on the Affordable Health Care Act and how it would affect us employees. And of course, it was a scare tactic. Everything was awful. All our insurance are going to go up and people were all up in arms. And then they're saying, how can, we, how can we overturn this Obamacare? And it was like, are you kidding me? Don't you read the news? Don't you know they've tried 40 times already? The, these people just, these are working people. And they don't keep track of things. So what does the common people do? They, they, don't, they don't even know what's going on. So the common people need to contact their elected representatives and say, I support this. Of course they do. Then, but they don't. No, That's they the don't. They, they don't, don't at all. All they do, and of course it was an insurance broker that was giving the meeting. Right. And so at the end they say, is there any questions? And so I submitted a webinar question, and I said, how about us going to single payer? And so, oh my gosh, she just went into this rant about how Canada and England is doing it, and you do not get seen by doctors, and, and I emailed her back, and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, we already have over 50% of single payer in our country already with Medicare and VA, there was no response. 
there is no response. No, no response at the, all. The it's facts like, are on your oops. side. Next question. Okay. Oh, how can we over? How can we overthrow Obamacare? You, you tell her to give me a call. I like that. Well, I, and so when I saw this article, I got it in my email about how you were here tonight and you were going to talk about the common people. I learned some very good things from you tonight. And I am just so excited to go have conversation with my coworkers. Well, yeah, kick some ass. All right. <laughs> we are having our national sales meeting next week, and people from all over the country are coming, and there's going to be a lot of people Good. from the south there. Well, you tell them my, my column next Tuesday is all about concierge medicine. You, you tell them to read that. Amen. All right, then. And, and she showed a map of all the states that are not instituting state health care. And it's all the Republican states. It's a blessing it's, in disguise. It's, just it, a, yeah. it's a blessing in disguise because the more states that allow the federal government to set up the exchanges, the further we are along to a federal system. So my cup's half full on that part. Hey. Hey. So um, I've been doing your AV back here for a while. And I just want to, yeah. Um, more, more, uh, three quick notes than direct questions. Um, I read. You're giving me notes? <laughs> I, Why don't you no, bathe no, more? No, no, no. You speak too I, fast. I read, I, read both, I read both times as every morning, the LA and the New York. And one of the things, one of the people I've been reading on this is um, Paul Krugman, who pointed out earlier this week that for the first time in the history of the United States, we actually have a medical insurance market because for the first time in the history of the United States, you know when you buy it from Kaiser or Anthem or whoever, this is the minimum coverage you get on a bronze, on a silver, on apples a gold. To apples. apples to apples. And yep. then you can go, well, if these guys are charging me $300 and these guys are charging me $500, if my doctor's in this one and in this one, I'm going to the $300 exactly. one. Exactly. First time. The second thing I wanted to point out, and a lot of people don't know this, is one of the reasons why a lot of the insurance companies and doctors and service providers are freaking out is one of the requirements of the ACA is um, you got to publish your data. What are you charging? How many people are you charging that to? What's the discount you give to which insurance companies? And that stuff is how New York and California have ended up with 50% cuts in the individual market insurance programs. Um, everybody who's in here talking about, oh my, and, and you mentioned it too, I don't want to knock another author, but this guy wrote a really good book. T.R. Reed from NPR. I know T.R. Reed. The Healing of America. Yep, this is a guy who had a golf injury that got yep. fixed and then went out again. And so if, if life deals you lemons, get a book contract. And he went around the world to each one of these systems. What would you do to fix this shoulder? And he explains what yep. each of these systems is like from Canada to Switzerland. It's, and a, it's a good book. Tom it's Reed and I were, were cannot in Tokyo recommend enough. Healing of America by T. R. Reed, R. E. I. D. And the last note, I can tell you why he doesn't go into FDR mode. I can tell you why he doesn't go out there and explain it. I can tell you why Kathleen Sebelius has not put up a a uh, road sign on every highway going into the South at the Mason Dixon line Don't saying. Don't make me beg for it. Tell me. Because the Republicans wrote that into the bill. And they're threatening to use the you can't politic with federal money, uh, federal law, to keep them from explaining this because gotcha. they claim that this is a political state. And this is, this is the thing they want. They're waiting for Obama to do it so that they can use it as an impeachment article. I think you guys hit on a good point because I, I have a lot of Republican friends and I always feel like I'm in the back because it's like they're always picking on me and everything and I try to say hey all right let me get informed a little bit but you know the thing that bothers me is everyone always says did you read the 3,000 pages well I'm assuming that you read the 3,000 pages okay, no way. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> you know and no, no right and then and then before I came here tonight my Republican friend says well don't forget to ask David Lazarus about the 17,000 whatever things there are and I'm like who reads that stuff? Nobody. Nobody. I'm I waiting mean, for the movie. She said it tonight. You said it tonight. She, it's, it's mind-boggling that the Democrats don't get the word out because I think, like, her boss, it was a scare tactic. It is amazing that people believe that. And, and, and it, it won't get shot down. It's going to happen, but it will take time, like you said. But 
one last little note is I'm with Aetna, and I don't know who else is. I'm self-employed, I work three jobs, and I bought this healthcare like two years ago. I have a high deductible because I'm very healthy. It's like if I get hit by a bus, I only have to pay $5,000, and they cover the rest. Um, my premium started at 201, I'm out now at 249. In two years, it's went up like $40, $50. I get a letter a month ago in the mail, they're dropping me. And the letter said, the reason why they're dropping me is they're no longer insuring individuals. And I've written about this in my column. And, yes. and basically, so no longer off to Obamacare for you, yes. is what they're and saying. And I run marathons, triathlons, yep. I'm healthy as an ox, and I'm probably gonna pay for you guys. Yep. But it's okay. Yep. And, we're, and we're, as as we're supposed to be all in this together. Anytime you get some Republican who says, well, did you read all 5,000 pages? No, but then again, I didn't read all 5,000 pages of the DMV code either, and I know I got to stop at a stop sign. So, you know, red herring. Besides that, if you pick through the 3,000 pages, you'll find paragraphs with, if section A3 on page 356, but if not, then page 800, exactly. because some of us actually looked at it and found that. <laughs> so only the lawyers who wrote it. Uh, for the insurance industry know about those 3,000 pages. Um, I want to first of all thank you so much um, for, this is the second time I've heard you speak and I think you do a fabulous job. Am I getting any better? I hope yeah. I okay. Yeah. No, I don't think you can get any better. You're really good. And I also re read your columns. Um, I'm, I'm the LA chapter uh, director for Healthcare for All California. And I just want to remind people that this is an insurance bill. It is our toe in the door. It is giving the people, the, our people the idea that, you know, maybe I do deserve health coverage. Maybe everyone deserves health coverage. The universality of it, I think, is really, really important. But it's also very important to remember that insurance is not health care. And, and this, it can be gamed, and it will be gamed. And 75% of all the bankruptcies that were due to medical debt were people who had insurance. They paid their premiums, they paid their deductibles, they paid their co-pays, and they went bankrupt anyway. And this can happen again, because although we cannot be denied insurance, because by the way, the insurance industries love getting that extra 50 million policyholders, since they were losing 17,000 policyholders a day in 2007. So they like the idea that we're all going to pay into their system, and they like to double dip, like we're going to pay, and then we're going to pay a second time through the federal treasury. But what is not guaranteed us is that they will, in fact, cover everything we need in the way we need it covered. And we know that because in the state of California alone, and I learned this from the LA Times, that might have even been your column a few years ago, that we had 45 million denials of care to people who had insurance. So having insurance means you've got a business plan. You're speechifying, let me take care of the All right, it here. doesn't mean you're gonna get care. Thank, Thank you. you. So we need universal single payer because we need care. Thank yes. you. A couple of things. You were talking earlier about you know, other countries and one of the key factors is primary care. And when you look at all these indicators, you say, well, what is it about, you know, is it continuity of care? You know, in other countries, people have access uh, beginning at an early age, and they have access to primary care doctors who can take care of them their entire life so that they have a lower incidence of chronic diseases which are not followed. What we have here, because of the dearth of primary care doctors, one of the main reasons is because the reimbursements are so low. People coming out of medical school will choose to go into specialties. So um, that's certainly one of the key areas, and until we, we, are, you know, we tackle that issue, um, I think we're not gonna see improved healthcare outcomes. Which you mentioned physicians paying for medical school. In other countries, that's paid for. They yep. come out here with $200,000 yep. in debt. So you know, none of this, as in terms of the Affordable Care Act, that's something that's not gonna happen. And so, you know, let me give you an example of the single-payer system in action. When I lived in Tokyo with T.R. Reed, um, single-payer system there, I'm in it because I have a job there, and so the money is coming out of my, you know, my, it's a taxi, right? 
I'm walking down the street one day, I'm wearing flip-flops. I step on the edge of a can, cut my foot open, hobbled into a nearby clinic that I'd never been to before. And in my, at that time, limited Japanese, you know, I'm, ow, help. <laughs> the doctor takes a look at me, has me sit down, cleans out the wound, sews it up, and sends me on my merry way. That's the single payer system in action, right there. So it's not pie in the sky. I want to say to all of you, thank you for having me here. Thank you for listening to me harangue. And in the words of John Lennon, I hope I passed the audition. Oh my God, do we have a present for you. Hey, remember you guys, join the club, get a pen. No, I can't. But you get one for being a speaker. Wow. Okay. But look at it. It's got a new woman. <laughs> I thought it was a man. Thank you. Thank you. So how about a big hand for David? And I have a couple of, uh, I have a, wait, 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 wait. Don't run, don't run. Wait, I have to introduce a couple people. Uh, first, I want to introduce Tina McKinner, who is the um, uh, Assistant Chief of Staff to Deputy Chief of Staff to Steve Bradford, my assembly person, and Ms. Autumn Burke, who is a candidate running from the 62nd Assembly District, and Chris Armenta, who is a candidate for the 54th Assembly District, now legal since Holly Mitchell won her race and is now Senator, Ms. Senator Holly Mitchell. Yep. Yeah. And is Lauren still here? Lauren Scott? Where's Lauren? Where are you? There you are. And Lauren Scott, who you all saw last month on our panel, also a candidate for the 54th Assembly District. I think, I don't know, when is your race, you guys? We're going to try and have a forum. If we can put it together fast, We'll have a forum so you can, those of you in there, I know at least a third of our club lives in the new 54th. So uh, I would really like y'all to come into this forum. You know, one thing I didn't talk about that's on your seats, you've seen it, the needybillionaires.com. Listen, Michelle, come on up. Michelle Morton, who is our communications co-chair, created the most amazing website. You must go to it. You must go to it, needybillionaires.com. Um, if we can get 100,000 signatures, the White House will get back to us and we will consider this. I mean, this is amazing. Michelle's going to tell you just a little bit about it before we wrap up here. OK. So basically, what we've got is it's over half a trillion dollars a year that goes from the bottom 90% to the top 10% each and every single year. Uh, that money, if we could have single payer right now, that money could pay for, it, it could expand Medicare to another of the 50 million who are uninsured. 49 million out of 50 million could be covered right now under Medicare with what goes to the top 10% every year. So uh, the big thing is, again, we want, we're current, encouraging people to sign the petition. It's an official WhiteHouse.gov petition asking the president to really talk about the big picture, $520 billion a year, okay, um, to talk about some of the specifics. Uh, the website goes into specific loopholes and specific infrastructure that could be um, used uh, with that money. So instead of the $140 billion that we give away for capital gains rate, um, each year, we could fix like 80% of our roads. After you finish crying and getting upset, because <laughs> you will get upset. That's why the, re the red side is red. But um, in any event, the key thing again is to share it with, uh, not only to sign the whitehouse.gov petition, but to share it with folks so that we can get to the 100,000 people to sign it. Uh, it's just, it's, this is ludicrous what we're doing, but most of us don't know the specifics. This is a way for you to get the specific information and then act on it. Yeah, and, yeah, and I want to thank you all 
Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for donating on the way in. If you wouldn't mind again on the way out, guess what? Thanks to your generosity, not only have we paid for the venue, but we have enough money to buy a set of speakers. Yes, yes Kelly, thank you so much.